Okay. Time to poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> who, who wants to start? A bit. Emergency hatch. Just close some more. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. And you know what? It's stuff like this is why I have my reservations about you know going remotely rim right now. Cause it's like e even if they do, every I, I can't help but think of like what happened with WebOS and Palm. You know, it, it may eventually come back and be stronger than ever, but I have no guarantee of that. It, it, oh, we're done. Yeah, it's just, uh... You want to know something interesting about my family? Uh, I have a 17-year-old niece. She doesn't want the iPhone with the cool kids. She wants the blackbird. I don't know why. What the hell is wrong with her? She's got some common sense. There's nothing wrong with blackbird. I'm saying she's not like a techie person. Yeah, I don't know. I don't but know there's nothing is. wrong with BlackBerry. They actually have a lot of end-user friendly features. They, uh, the two platforms that handle Flash content best is the latest version of BlackBerry and WebOS. I was going to say because uh, Flash on <laughs> Android is, uh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't... It, well, no, that's the thing. It doesn't... On, on most mobile platforms, the Flash content does not properly integrate into the site. Whereas yeah. on... I was going to say, whereas, like, WebOS, I know WebOS it did. Yeah, and it, the playbook's doing the same thing. So it's like if you have a Flash video or Flash banner or something like that, instead of it being this thing you have to launch separately, it's actually there in the page as if you loaded it on a desktop, which is how it should be. Because it, yeah. it's, it's content of the page, not this separate thing I have to go do stuff with. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but uh, okay. I'm just gonna say it, and then y'all can comment on it. And then I'm so I guess I'm gonna poke the bear. <laughs> it wasn't us this time, Dad. Yeah, it, yeah. They they made me do it, cowards. I didn't, I, I didn't make you do shit. It's in the news, and you don't want to cover it. More rim execs head for the exit. <laughs> That's the story. Basically, the way this story is written is the RIM executives can't get out of RIM fast enough. <laughs> They're basically running for the exit door and... Not because they want to go into consumer markets or markets where they can like, uh, make money in. Like, yeah. They're yeah. being consumerized with the, all the fluff and the bubblegum as the bear would say. I, I mean, it, you gotta wonder when your higher ups, who know more than most, are deserting the sinking ship like rats. You know, it, ship. Ship. <laughs> it, it, it's just one of those. Hmm. And then this is not. Yeah, it's not the first time it's happened either. This is like the latest wave of. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. Oh, look, a window. Woof! <laughs> Sick. So, I, I, I wish he was here. He could, I, I'm sure he would, like, come in and explain to us that it's like, oh, no, no. Oh, well, see, what you don't understand is this is just the bad people leaving, not the good people. This is the people we want to go, anyways. You know, because it's... This is like our Meg Whitman's. We want them to go away. <laughs> uh, so, who do you think has the balls uh, to, um, you know, step up, step forward on, on Rim? Don't get me started on Meg Whitman, Rusty. <laughs> oh! Don't get me started on Meg Whitman, Rusty. I have a different opinion than you on that currently. Uh, okay, no, you brought it up, go ahead. That's what was the sex of the draft. <laughs> go ahead, dude, go ahead. Rusty's opinion is Meg Whitman's going to run HP into the ground, essentially. I think the last CEO, uh, CEO essentially did that anyway just by making announcements. <laughs> um, and the reversal of certain decisions and the open sourcing of certain products has been a interesting turn of events, shall we say. Now, I'm not saying she's a great CEO, because, well, look at her history from eBay. Um, uh, look at her governor 
campaign. Look at everything she's done in the last decade. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what. Name me one, aside from open sourcing WebOS, which we don't even know if they're going to do right, but aside, which we all like that WebOS is supposedly getting open source, so that's going to suck. But aside from that, okay, name me one other decision that Meg Whitman has made that is not a what the fuck do you have a brain decision in the last decade. Um, keeping the uh, PSG group. Say that again. Keeping the consumer brand of HP that got rolled back into the company that the other idiot wanted to spin off and sell. Okay. That was probably the, the only... Uh, I'm not saying I agree with 99% of her decisions. <laughs> okay. I'm saying I'm taking what she's done at HP. So far. Done, <laughs> so far. That's what she's done at HP. I'm not looking at the last 10 years. I'm not looking at the last... You're not looking at the Meg Whitman-ness. You're just going, oh, she too can change. <laughs> I'm like... Um, hopeful enthusiasm, but I leave it at that. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. It, 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 I, I will admit those were two probably good decisions, but it's Meg Whitman. I mean... I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just saying, <laughs> as an HP CEO, I'm not, I have to look at it for what it is. Now, if I went by back history, I would be as skeptical as you are in that regard. <laughs> I'm not denying that. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> okay. Well, it, well, and it, well, but it makes you wonder how desperate was HP that the only person they could hire was Meg Whitman. <laughs> well, when you got the guy from SAP saying, oh, we're going to go to software and only. Well, that's just dumb. Okay. It's not like it, it's not like your it's like your hardware OEM wasn't making money. They just weren't making as much as Apple, which is why they wanted to sell it. Well, and you know what? Honestly, if I had multi million dollars, I would go buy an OEM. <laughs> if I had like the well, that would probably be like what a five hundred million dollar plus purchase to go buy a a failing oh, OEM. Fine. Yeah. Say what? Which one would you buy? One going to business? You rename it? Well, it, it's easier to build a hardware brand starting from a failing OEM than starting from scratch because you at least have all the industry contacts and everything else. Okay, what about Pack and Bell? Really? Well, I said failing, not failed. There's a difference. No, uh, they failed in the it was US. failing, but like, up, they're still the reason why they failed was because of bad PC world magazines that made one of the worst computers. They, 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 they weren't a good OEM because they made somebody freaking confused like Apple did. Mm -hmm. Their like, product lines were inconsistent, but they made good machines. Okay. Anyway. Anyways. Like, where were we? Um, <laughs> equipment. Well, yeah, but we kind of finished. Uh, no, we're talking about RAM. Oh, yeah. And the executives bailing for the exit sign. <laughs> I think we got... The ship is sinking. Yeah. You know what? I thought like Cap's supposed to go down the ship. No, 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 no. Captain gets a golden parachute. Oh. And fires an angry birdie to project him. You see, you see, the ship is the piggy and the captain is the angry birdie. He has to fire it at the gravity field, and you know, the goal is to. <laughs> I'm not. Tiny is. Guys. <laughs> Ugh. So it's all Tiny's fault. Yeah. I already beat all the Angry Birds. I don't need any more. There's no more Angry Birds. I beat them all. They're done. There's no more Angry Birds. No, come on. Uh, you know, that's the perfect analogy right there, because Tetris 2.0 sucked. <laughs> oh, you mean it went for Super Nintendo? 
Okay, uh, what, what haven't we covered yet? We've done blah, 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 blah. Okay. I'm going to find the SPM bills of Emacs I was talking about my ass. Do we care? Nope. Not that, but I've highlighted. Okay, you lead us off, Kami. Um, uh, Google Chrome OS bursts out of a uh, browser with new interface. Oh, goody. It gives you overlapping windows. Yeah. Which is exactly what iOS was had been doing for a while now. Can't they just back the Android x86 crap and just leave it at that? No. Well, I... You know, honestly, uh, there's a UI for Android that has nothing to do with Google that I love, but I don't think it's going to pr ever prosper fully on Android. I think, uh, I, I, personally, if I had the resources, I'd approach them and say, have y'all considered using this UI on another platform? But I like the UI. Uh, but not it's not the Chrome thing, but it, it, adds that this it adds the type of functionality you need, but it's touch-friendly. But uh, we'll go into that a different way. Uh, personally, I think, regardless of whether you love or hate Chrome OS, it needed to make a transition like this. Well, we'll put the link in the thing and cut some you know, pictures in. Buys, um, you know, uh, Chrome OS, you know, like Chromebook, you know, buys them. Like, you know, what, what do you know people think uh, I, Okay, right now, no. But, um, I really do think, even though both of y'all probably disagree with me, that Chrome OS will do very well for a lot of reasons. And I'm going to... No, no, no. I'm going to tell you exactly why I see Chrome OS doing great. It is the equivalent for a desktop platform what Adobe's service... You know, Adobe sells their software suites two ways now. One way, you can own it. The other way, you can... The other way, you get. You can subscribe to it for X dollars a month with no contract with anything else. So let me see, I can give Adobe $2,000 plus for the Creative Suite, or I can give them less than 100 bucks a month, and use it for this 30 day period, and then turn it off next month. Exactly. So, exactly, and that is the market where I see something like Chrome OS thriving for businesses that have a need for premium services, but they don't need them all the time. So they'll go in and they'll get a Chrome OS package. Doesn't matter. It, it basically, as enough premium service applications work their way into the platform and, and, and premium web-based things and get bundled into it, which is not there yet, but it's going to come. Yeah, this is the software as a service platform is exactly what Chrome OS is. And I, I don't like that model personally, but there is a shitload of small businesses who would eat it up. Well, you're being strangely quiet, Bob. Oh, Chrome OS. <laughs> Chrome OS is what netbooks originally were supposed to be anyway. Which is the other reason I see it doing well. In the long run. In the short run, I've, it's a fad. In the long run, I see it becoming a very much standard. That, that's well, really how I view Chrome OS. Because in the enterprise, yeah. when they just need a web browser. Like, or our schools, they got to sign some deals. Well, for me, Chrome OS is like, um, what is it, Jolly Cloud? With it, except for without the locally storage apps, really. It's really all it is to me. It's, it's a great way for, you know, VPN, you know, infrastructure stuff, I can see it as a thin client system. 
It's really what it is mostly to me. I mean, and, and where that's most predominant is in small business sector. Small bit. For what we do, for like the, the place I work, they would thrive on because that's all they use. They use thin clients for ninety percent of the crap they do. They have network drives and all that crap. So a uh, uh, Chrome OS, you know, Chromebook would make more sense than these monstrosity thin clients that are still kicking out and around. <laughs> well, and see, that's the thing I really see going on here, honestly. If you want to know what I think is more a threat to Windows than anything else, it's Chrome OS and the various alternative like Chrome OS platforms that are out there being built right now. No, not iOS, but the, 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 these, these thin things. And the reason I say that is because they're a threat to what's keeping Windows afloat, and that's, that's small business and mid-level enterprise, which could transfer a lot of their stuff over to these things and then they would they, they'd actually save a shitload of money doing that once the platforms get built out a little more well I honestly wonder if that isn't some of the motivation behind Windows 8 that Microsoft's realizing they need to depend more on the end-level consumer than enterprise people because they may lose a shitload of enterprise people. That, I mean, yeah, my, they're not trying to. They're, they're a bad thing for our audience, like um, with the enterprise. But Ben is like one of the bigger enterprises. He must be in the minority or something. You know. Well, uh, Microsoft made that that mistake once before. You remember they used to be in charge of servers, and then they let. They let something like this get out from I mean, under them. The first them. one was DOS, then they tried to move over with servers with NT, and then they made some workstations. And then Windows 2000 tried to go on like, the enterprise like business thing, like it was like an in-between. And then XP, they just brought that to the home. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, do, do, you, do you see in like five, ten years this being the standard for small to mid-level businesses? Uh, I can see well, it, it the business, mostly you know? in small to mid level, yeah. Um, just because of the features and functions most you're going to use in a networked environment are stuff that you have to pay way too much money in licensing fees just to Microsoft for all the li Windows licenses you need for a thin client system. Right. Yeah, but how much would these Chromebooks cost the, uh, the businesses? They would be software as a service. They're software as a service. You pay a monthly, you pay a monthly fee. The package. And How much would the package cost? No, in a lot of cases, the package is given to you. I mean, they're like a cell phone. You sign the contract and you get the thing and the other shit. I mean, uh, and you can download the Chrome stuff. More and more, this this is like the lease it system, is what it is. Because well, what lease up. well, not probably what they're talking about is. Uh, when Google made the announcement with the for the last Chrome big Chrome announcement they made, um, they're talking about you know your hardware is always going to be upgradable because within that lease cycle they give you new hardware essentially. Now, would something like this uh, make the uh, power user system more expensive, or like the uh, entry-level power user system kind of like um, you know the app? What you know, basically what the it depends how much of the market they eat up. If this passed twenty-five percent of market share, yes. If twenty-five percent of people are leasing systems then there's less systems being produced for people who actually want to own so their systems. Basically, this will put a line in the sand where, okay, you have these appliance devices, you have this, like, little cheapy boxes that play with Minecraft, that's about it. And then you have this, okay, we have the i7s. It'd be, it'd be worse, it'd be worse than that. And the reason I say that is because... No, no. The reason I say that is because one of the real advantages to software of a service done properly, especially when it's the platform itself, which is what Chrome OS is. You're not going to edit 4K video from a, from a SaaS system. 
Kami, Kami, it's like the game console market. Okay, I have uh, an i7 system. Uh, uh, no, no, Kami, Kami, listen. The, the, the world this would create, you're asking about cost. I have the software as a service i7 system for 50 bucks. I have the buy it myself, own it i7 system for $2,000. Which one are 9 out of 10 of the consumer going to buy? The subsidized one. Yeah, but the one that does the system uh, add up over time? Yes. But people don't see it that way. They see the upfront cost. That's right. It's a, lot of the, it's a lot of the reasons for in the, in the cell market is the same thing. They have the, un, all phones are unlocked if you buy them at the retail price. If you buy them at the subsidized price, you're, get, you're locked into a two-year contract. So it depends on which one you want to purchase. It's the same thing with SaaS. And the thing there is, uh, the both people that you wind up paying more but for something you would have subscribed to anyways and they wind up making more uh, and and so on and so forth you know it, it I, I it's a good business model and for a lot of places it's particularly in business because well, no, well, no. It's like it's particularly in business that works out great for them because they get to deduct the software as a service and not do the complex depreciation of hardware deductions. They actually get more deductions, and they get like like he was saying, as long as you're still on the contract on the service, you get free upgrades every eighteen months to three to three years. Yep. So you don't. It's just they, uh, why buy anything? I'll just lease forever. <laughs> That's why a lot of companies used to look yeah, but people still buy lease. cars. Actually, no. A lot of places lease cars. It's particularly companies. Well, yeah, what about you? You have a Jetta. I'm a strange person. I do math. No, you're a smart person. No, I'm a strange person. I do okay. math. No, no, no. Rusty, you're, no, you're a strange person. person. You don't want to in gasoline. You want to have diesel. Uh, okay, say that again, Bob. I, I say you're a strange person to most, whether you consider most consumers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know I'm not the average consumer. I, I, I walk in. I, I, I walk into a lease it place and I see the dryer for twenty bucks a week, and I realize, you know what? It only costs me ten dollars to do laundry at the Coin Mart. Why would I lease a dryer for twenty bucks a week? <laughs> it's, it's like, but. Well, you have to have the dryer hookups for that. <laughs> but but yeah, no, yeah, I was saying I'd rather do the I, per, me personally, I would rather do the laundry at the at the coin place for 10 bucks a week, set the other 10 bucks aside, and yes, ultimately buy a dryer. That's me. There are dozens of people who will lease the dryer at Rena Center for 20 bucks a week. <laughs> That's not a paid endorsement. <laughs> No, if anything, it's a if anything, it's a paid unendorsement to point out how how stupid that is. But disaster. <laughs> yeah, I've honestly wondered if people just don't do basic math because it's like it, it, I mean like. Well, I, I know, but it's like, I, I sit there and I look at like what that stuff costs by the week. I'm like, okay, so this thing's worth 500 bucks most. Okay, 900. Okay, it's worth 1,000 bucks, and I'm going to overpay for it by the week. It's like, okay, how many weeks would it take me to actually buy it? Wait, I'm buying the thing, oh, on most cases in those, those like Reddit Center or like places, you've bought the thing five times over over the course of the year. Uh, it's like, why don't you just save for a couple of months? <laughs> We're idiots. I don't want the idiots to bring me down. Like, um, um, I guess people have been smart in recent years with records. You know, like people have been smart enough. Like, like people my age and you know, a couple years younger have been buying records instead of MP3s on iTunes. They know what's going on with records, you know. But what will they know what's going on with the computers? 
Well, the people who buy vinyl are audiophiles. Yeah, and it's, and it's more of them my age than people your age and, and three years young, and like three years. There's more people my age that, that are audiophiles that buy vinyl records, and there are people like five, um, your age or five or ten years older than you. Yeah, it's called a generational thing. It's called most of those people are listening to grandma, uh, grandma or grandpa talk about the audiophile days, and they're like, Really? Okay. <laughs> That's, well, but your generation in a couple of years, you know, a couple of, one generation above it, you like, I guess they don't care. They just want access to it. They want. They should. They exchange. Um, I guess we're gonna be like that. We're gonna we're gonna have our grandkids if we have any of them. We're gonna talk. On, we're gonna tell our kids about the open computer days where you can install apps uh, that you download from a website without going through a approval process. You can install it. People actually had it. In my day, we didn't have to jailbreak our device to be able to install software. <laughs> okay, moving on. In my day, we actually could install any software we wanted, so if we were stupid, it was our own fault. Exactly. We were allowed to make our own mistakes. We didn't have to ask big, big corporate government to give us permission to make them. We didn't have to ask the half you know what? Honestly, I don't think it's going to be Apple. I think Apple's days are very much numbered. I honestly think Microsoft days are very much numbered. I can honestly see at some point in the next 20 years, Microsoft being in the position where somebody will come gobble it up. I can you know see what? that. I think the industry would be better for it. Well, depending who gobbles it up. Yeah, it, <laughs> it could get a lot worse. <laughs> okay, on the desktop market, I mean the legitimate desktop market, <laughs> it could be a lot better. Okay. All right. God, can you imagine if, like, someday down the road, Google bought Microsoft and Facebook? Uh, I'd be really paranoid to Google at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Once the one has actually happened, it's like, oh my god, we were right, which is Joe Johnson, but we were right, I, that's so scary, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the internet then would be controlled by Google. Exactly! Wouldn't that make you feel special? <laughs> um, Skynet, I, Skynet I, just I, I would embrace Linux fully, regardless of the fact that you're watching it. And unless we have anything else to go in, I guess we'll head off on that degree of paranoia? Yeah. Okay. This show has been brought to you by Cyberdyne Systems. There are no Terminators. Yes. <laughs>